so it seems that we have a little bit of hunting horn gameplay to go along with the absolutely fantastic statement the Monster Hunter team made in regards to how hunting horn would play in wilds. If you're watching this video, chances are you know how I felt about the Rise iteration of hunting horn, so you also know just how excited I was when the team said they'd be going to a more world style horn. To be clear, that while I wasn't a fan of Rise horn overall, there were definitely things that I liked. And that's okay to have differing opinions on the matter, as I said in the video and many times outside of that, if you were a fan of Rise Horn, then that's great, and I wouldn't want to steer anyone away from that. The thing that makes me the most optimistic for Wild's Horn is the fact that it feels like they're improving or enhancing the weapon, rather than drastically changing it to appeal to an outside base the way that they did with Rise. A lot of the changes in the overview honestly feel like a solid compromise of things actual hunting horn enjoyers wanted and the more popular changes in Rise. But let's go ahead and jump into the actual video itself. Now in terms of the horn design, I'm sure that this is one of the horns we will be getting early on in the game, and if it's any kind of indication to the designs that we'll be seeing in Wilds, my hype has shot through the roof. Pairing this primalistic horn with the bone armor, which happens to be my favorite armor in World, was such a solid move and beyond aesthetically pleasing. We get a tiny glimpse of the straight up bone horn, and it looks just as nostalgic and underrated as ever. The horn designs in 5th gen have been phenomenal, but I have this feeling, after getting to see the weapons that have been on display in these overviews, that we haven't seen anything yet. They don't pull any punches from the very beginning of the overview by showing us a super smooth and clean animation going from an attack directly into a side recital. I feel like I found myself saying it in just about every single overview that the animations, transitions, and combos all looked so incredibly fluid. After we get that gorgeous transition from attack to recital, we get something that has me extremely intrigued. The hunter finishes the recital animations and seems to play a buff but then does a bit of a quick transition attack to then play another buff which leads to a couple more transition attacks after finishing off with an animation that looks very akin to an encore activation from older generation hunting horns. Something I noticed while writing the script for this video and watching the footage, the hunter actually gets a similar glow to a buff animation when he does a slight readjustment forward here. Now it's all a bit speculative of what's actually going on here, whether we actually have songs queued up and are playing through a buff list, or if we're playing a few songs with an encore for the set at the end. We don't really know, but it feels like this is genuinely a return to form. Regardless of what exactly is going on, I know I already like what I'm seeing. We then come to one of the cutest, coolest things, where the hunter does a little jig and then places a very large bubble that does some damage upon placement, clearly from the monster reeling and the damage number. First, I want to comment on just how huge these bubbles are in comparison to the bubbles we used in 5th gen. It seems like now we'll be able to have a better chance of just placing a bubble down and then immediately have that hitting other hunters, especially our fellow hammer bros that will most likely be by the head with us anyways. And that's assuming that these bubbles will also have the purpose of buffing, which I would imagine is the case but would technically still be speculation, but the way the hunter glows like your typical buff activation leads me to believe that that's the case. Next shot we see three of these bad boys like a line drawn in the sand where daring the monster to cross. As the hunter starts attacking, we see the shockwaves resonating on each of these bubbles. This was one of the things I think Risehorn did very well as it put an even higher emphasis on damage through sound and shockwaves. And these shockwaves aren't just coming off when the songs play, it's even going off when the hunter does a backswing and double swing, showing that the shockwaves must go off also when you play a note, and that is a fantastic sign. The damage from these shockwaves isn't massive, but it's just the right amount to where they could stack up very easily for some game-changing damage. All in all, with the bubbles, bigger bubbles is cool for me, and even if that was all that we got from that, I'm okay with it. After the bubble placements, we get to see what might have been my absolute favorite thing from Risehorn, the Earthshaker. But this isn't your dad's boomer-ass Earthshaker. This is Earthshaker 2.0, and it fucking rocks. One of the things I've talked about before is how I felt the guitar hunting horns no matter how much I love their designs, they felt a little bit out of place because we didn't have animations that really took advantage of the designs. But that's all changed now. Can you imagine having a usurper's growl in hand using this move? Absolute cinema. The difference in this Earthshaker is that we get multiple damage ticks as the hunter strums, so just how Rise's Earthshaker was a little bit of a risk and reward, this version seems to be cranking that up a bit since we'll be locked into this animation for a bit of time to get the full brunt of the attack off. Luckily,
Luckily for the hunter in the overview, there's some staggering and flinching that guarantees the full animation. The fact that this is just going to be in the immediate kit is going to be so much fun. Overall, it's 10 out of 10, and I like everything about Earthshaker 2.0. Now, there's not too much to say about the grapple move outside of it looking dope, and I'm kind of interested in how vital these grapple type moves will be in your typical hunts. But outside of that, I mean, it looks really cool. Next, we get to see a move, at least part of it, that seems to do some pretty heavy shockwave damage after a series of motions with a big bang finish. The thing that immediately came to mind was Sonic Smash, and then maybe a possibility of Slide Beat, but I'm leaning towards Sonic Smash, seeing as how the animation looks very similar, and the hunter rests in that final position for a bit, rather than leaping back to it like you do with Slide Beat. Now, that's not to say that they couldn't have adjusted animations, etc, etc, but with what we have here, it looks like we're getting another hard-hitting burst with this Sonic Smash-esque attack. Maybe they implemented this so we'd have a singular Big Bang in our kit now that Earthshaker is divided into multiple hits and strumming animations. Finally, we get presented with an absolute badass attack that I can't be sure if it's Hunting Horn's version of a clash, something along the lines of like a long sword foresight, or if it's just a straight up dodge and follow up attack regardless of activation. The way the hunter's body glows makes me lean more towards a long sword foresight, but the more I watch it, it doesn't feel like a one to one comparison because the monster is very far from the hunter's hitbox. So maybe we're just getting something that really is just a dodge and follow up with a massive attack that we'll just have to carefully pull off. Regardless of what it is, I can tell it's going to be hella rewarding to pull off, and it adds maneuverability and positioning potential that we'll definitely benefit from. So taking everything in the video into consideration, I have to say my hype levels are off the charts. I said this while we were watching the overviews live on Twitch, but the team has done a fantastic job of making these overviews exciting, building hype, and making you want to play the weapon even if it wasn't in your repertoire in the first place. The biggest thing that has me hype is the fact that there was a lot of things outside of the statement saying they were going back to a more world style horn in this video that very much did show a return to form while retaining some of the things that were great about Rise Horn. Like I said at the beginning of the video, everything I saw feels like an enhancement of the weapon and that feels so good as a person who loves hunting horn. The design of the horn was perfect, the size differences in the bubbles, Earthshaker being a focus mode move, there's just so much to love in this video. But that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys for always being so patient with me. Even with this very video, I've never liked pushing out a video to be first and I've never been a content creator that can just make videos to keep up with the algorithm, but you guys continue to support and I genuinely appreciate that. You can catch me streaming on Twitch if you'd like and we have a Discord available for hunters to join up and hunt. Both links are going to be in the description, but yeah, thank you again. Happy hunting and I will see you guys in the next video.